Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, Dusty here. Uh, I'm going to be doing a full getting started guide, tutorial, overview, whatever you want to call it on Adobe Audition CC 2019. Uh, the one I did the past couple of years uh, seems to uh, have done really well. Uh, people seem to really have found it helpful and so I'm going to be giving you the full rundown of if you're just getting started with Audition or if you know it slightly and you want to get better at recording audio and audio production. Uh, definitely uh, stick around and uh, ask your questions in the comments section and we can uh, uh, hopefully uh, find solutions to all of your audition questions. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So Adobe Audition is uh, the audio, my audio editing software of choice. Um, it is what I do to edit all of my podcasts, all of my voiceover work, all of my uh, anything that I do audio is done within Adobe Audition. So with that being said, let's dive in. As you see here, this is your workspace. This is a multi-track here. So you see here, here you've got multiple tracks on the side track one two three four five six all of the different audio that fits into that specific track here but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves uh, over here on the top left this is going to be where your files are so if you go to file new you'll have an option to do either a multi-track session which is what you see here with multiple tracks included that's you know, for things like podcast, music, things like that. And then an audio file, if we go to file, new audio file, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to go ahead and hit OK here. And this is going to be where we start recording audio. So if I hit the red record button here, it's fairly self-explanatory. And the way I have my workspace set up, you can see the WAV file kind of forming here. Uh, I've got this down here to kind of see any kind of, uh, I guess you would say, abnormalities in the audio. Uh, when you're a voice actor, this part down here is really helpful because you can kind of see kind of what's going on with your audio but you can drag that and maneuver uh, the the system and, and your workspace any way that you want to and in 2000 the version 2019 even more so than in the past so when you're done recording you can either hit the space bar or you can hit the red record button once more and then when you want to you can play it back by just go ahead and selecting somewhere in the audio and then pressing the space bar or you can click the play button right here kind of uh, I guess you would say and then just like that you can listen to your audio and then we can zoom in with the mouse scroll wheel just like that zoom out with the mouse scroll wheel or what I like to do is if you have a longer bit of of audio which is like this here this is a project I was working on not too long ago uh, you can zoom in and you can see here at the top up here you can kind of see this little gray bar here that's got the hand tool you can actually click and drag and if you have a longer bit of audio you can kind of maneuver and get to different bits and pieces of the audio much quicker than you could uh, than if you went here and did it this way and you can also drag somewhere on the timeline and and, and do it that way so that's kind of how you get around the, the, the workspace and so now now that you know kind of where all of that is, if you want to change this, you can go up here, uh, go to window and then go to workspace, which is the first one I have default selected. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing uh, podcasting and whatnot, I go to advanced mixing. And with that, I have a little more control over what I'm doing. But honestly, guys, I would stick with default or classic. That's kind of what what you know, where you kind of want to live as as you get started. And so uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Now, if you ever want to add a certain, you know, element to your workspace, you can always go to window uh, and then right here, you're going to see the different things here. So if you wanted to add like the time here, which is always a good thing to have. Now you can see uh, within the time recording here, I have the, the time down here at the bottom. Now, you can move any of these things as well. You can click the little hamburger icon, it's what I call it, the little three lines here stacked on top of each other. And just like with any of the Adobe pieces of software, you can click and hold and you can close the panel, undock the panel, do any of that stuff. I'm gonna undock that panel. That way it allows me to go here and I can move this panel anywhere I want. Or I can go here, go to panel group settings, and then I can just close it if that's something that I want to do. So you have great flexibility in the interface of Adobe Audition to work with. And so hopefully you guys take advantage of that. So let's go back up here. Let's go to file, new audio file, and let's dive into some audio and see kind of what we want to do. So if we go back here to our, um, our audio that we just recorded here in the tutorial, we can see our WAV file here. We can select any bit of that audio. Uh, if we want to go and remove any of the audio, so let's say we want to remove this section all the way from the start to here, basically we select that and hit the backspace or delete key uh, on our keyboard, and that's going to get rid of it. If you want to undo something that you've done, go and hit Command or Control Z, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a Windows, uh, and that's going to bring it back. Or you can go to Edit and then go to 
undo and you can do that as far back as the actual recording so you can undo uh, as many things as you want to so don't worry about messing it up get in here get dirty get you know have some fun with your audio uh, also if you want to go and reduce the volume of an entire audio track that you're dealing with you can see here that you have your little audio adjuster the little the scroll wheel here and you can click and hold that with your mouse and reduce or increase the decibels of the actual audio so if we go drag to the right we're going to increase the the, the volume if we drag to the left we're going to obviously decrease now you can put this guy anywhere you want on the timeline i like to keep him somewhere up here it kind of makes it a little more convenient for me uh, and then if you want to you can pin that there to where you can't move and it kind of locks it down uh, now what i've done is i've actually hot keyed uh delete and silence so there's going to be a lot of times when like this right here is going to be a breath like I already know from editing audio that this is going to be where I go, you know, where I breathe in like that. And so I want to, I don't want to delete that because it's going to sound really weird. I want to go and I want to silence that. So normally the hot key for Adobe Audition and silence is something like, I believe it's Q or S or I'm not quite sure I've changed mine so long ago. So in order to change your hotkeys in Adobe Audition, go up here and go to edit and then go down to where you see keyboard shortcuts. I'm calling them hotkeys. They're really called keyboard shortcuts. Uh, and then if you see here, what I've done is I've made my F key to be silence and my G key to be delete. Now for you, Again, it's whatever you're comfortable with. So for me, I have my hands, my left hand is on the keyboard, my right hand on the mouse a lot of the times as I'm editing. And so obviously my, my left pointer finger is already on the F key and then the G key is right next to it. And so if I want to silence something, I've got F there. And if I want to delete something, I just move one over and I go to G and it's all done really quickly. And as you can see, uh, I, I've really kind of adjusted this from the norm so if you want to change your 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 keyboard shortcuts go ahead and search for the command here so go ahead and search for let's say silence just like this here so if you want to go here go to effects silence as you can tell i've got q and f here you just select right there and you can go and and, and click a button on your keyboard to make it that specific keyboard shortcut so hopefully that helps you out there uh, so i'm going to go ahead and tap the f key on my keyboard and as you can see this has been completely silenced now if you don't want it to be completely silenced i recommend going up here to your audio adjuster and then go here and drag left a little bit sometimes it sounds a little abnormal if you go all the way silent uh, and so you might want to adjust it a, a little more fine tuning uh, when it comes to that there so again that's how you silence that's how you delete and so as far as adding effects to your audio, I'm not going to get too deep on the different effects that you need to add. I've got videos on that. There's other great creators out there like Mike Russell, people like that who are doing specific things for audio. Uh, but if you want to add a, uh, an effect to a piece of audio, go up here and go to effects. And then you can see here you have all of your different ones, amplitude, delay, modulation, all of that can be done here. Now, what I've done is I actually have a few favorites that I apply to all of my audio. I have a noise gate. I have a, a voice final, which I actually got from Mike Russell. I'll link down below a, a link to his YouTube channel. Uh, and then a compressor. I add a little bit of compression to my audio. And then there's a normalize to, uh, to a negative 3 dBs there. If that's something that you want to do. Uh, and so if you ever want to uh, create a favorite, all you have to do is go to start recording favorite. So all you do is go to start recording favorite and then go up here to effects and then add the effect that you want to add. So let's say we want to amplify it uh, by just a little bit here. That way there, go to apply, then go back up to favorite and then go to stop recording favorite. It's then going to ask you, what do you want to name that favorite? And then go ahead and give it a name here, whatever you want to name it, uh, whatever you want it to be, and then click OK. And then once you're done, go to your favorites bar. And as you can see, there it is right there. Uh, favorites are great if you have stuff and effects that you're applying to uh, audio on a frequent basis, something you do all of the time. Uh, so I've kind of taught you how to navigate around. I've taught you how to apply effects. Let's talk about getting this into a multi-track and kind of how that looks. This is the beauty of Adobe Audition to CC 2019. Uh, they've made it more visually appealing. You can record onto individual tracks within the multi-track. So much cool stuff going on. So go to File, New, Multi-Track Session, just like that. Give it a name, click OK. And uh, yes, I want to overwrite that. And as you can see here, this is our blank right here. This is our blank multi-track session. I'm going to kind of decrease the size of that over there. We got track one up here, track two. Uh, let's start with these simple things. If you want to rename a track, click the track there or double click it and then give it a name, whatever you want it to be. Just select the track and then go ahead and start typing in what you want it to be and you're good to go. Now, in order to get audio from an audio file to the multi-track editor, you either go to file, 
import file from your computer if that's something you want to do. Find the audio file, bring it in that way. Or uh, what I like to do is keep all of the ones that I'm working with uh, over here on the left in my file manager, and then just click and hold, drag that guy over to whatever track you want it to be. And as you can see, all of these are going to be color coded, which is amazing. So if we go here and drag that to track number one, as you can see here, the track, if you're used to uh, previous versions of Adobe Audition, it's going to look a little different to you as it's going to have the little border around it, and it's going to look just a little better. If you want to change those colors, click the color on the left hand side there, double click it, and then it's going to give you all types of different options where you can go here and adjust the different colors that you want them to be. So we'll leave it a nice little pink color so it'll be really, really bright. Uh, and then the same thing goes for anything else. If you want to bring uh, another piece of audio in, uh, all you have to do is go here, click on that, and then drag that down below, and you are good to go. So I'm going to go and open a recent podcast episode that I did. Nope, that's not it. That's the wrong. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, as you can see here, I have the intro. I have the opening. I have a little fade here, a little sound effect. And then I go into the conversation and I have an outro. So if I wanted to, I could name all of these intro, main body, do all of that good stuff. And if you want to maneuver audio around, as you saw there with the mouse scroll wheel, I can highlight over the tracks over here and scroll my mouse. And as you can see, it's making those tracks bigger. That way I can kind of manipulate them a little better. And then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna zoom in by using my little hand tool like I was telling you guys earlier. And now I can kind of see the different intricacies of my multi-track editor. So as you can see here, when it goes from the opening to the actual body of the podcast, you can kind of see what it does here. I'll press play and jump into this week's conversation. So I've got the opening into a sounder there, and then I also go into the body of the podcast. In order to move stuff around in your multi-track editor, click and hold, boom, just like that. You can move a track anywhere on the multi-track editor. Uh, and then if you want to apply effects or you want to uh, adjust the volume of specific tracks, you can do all of that on your track main uh, adjuster over here on the far left. So what you're going to want to do is uh, for volume, you've got your little volume knob here, boom, left or right, just like you normally would. Uh, and then let's go ahead and zero that out. You can also fine tune the volume by going here and then using your keyboard to fine tune the actual dBs that you want the volume to be. Uh, if you want to add an effect here, you can go and click that actual track, have it selected. You know a track selected if it's highlighted. So you can see here that little light gray feature that lets you know that track is selected and then go up here and go to effects add an effect so we'll go here and we will add uh, let's say a, a simple amplify effect um let's do a one uh, one db boost like that there uh and then go ahead you can toggle that on or off and that's going to apply it to that actual the effects rack will be right here you can drag the effects rack anywhere like you would normally so that's how you, that's how you kind of add effects there. Also, a new thing in Adobe Audition CC 2019 is the ability to actually on individual tracks right here, you can see I can increase and decrease the volume directly on the tracks by going right here. Now, if you want to fine tune a specific piece of audio within a multi-track editor, what I like to do is basically go and select that. And you again know it's selected because it's highlighted and then just double click and it'll take you directly into the audio editor where you can go and fine tune the different things that, that you want to do there. Uh, and one of the cool things that I forgot to mention to you guys is that if sometimes you get some mouth noise, like you just heard there, my mouth kind of click. It's just natural unless you're trained to not do that. Uh, what I like to do is I like to highlight here wherever that mouth noise is. Let's say that area here is kind of where the mouth noise is. You can kind of fine tune that and look and say, oh, there's some mouth noise right there. You can go up to favorite and then go to auto heal. That's one that comes with Adobe Audition and it kind of removes that and it doesn't make it sound unnatural. Uh, really cool feature of Adobe Audition. There's also de-essing and de-sibilance uh, as, as well as it, there's some uh, options to get rid of the pops when you say the, the P's uh, and you can go to your favorites here and, and kind of look at the de-esser and see if those work for you. Uh, again, I would kind of play with those before you, you, do, you do one in your project because it, it may end up, uh, the effect may be a little too harsh and it, it takes away from the quality of your audio. Now, like I said, this is a basic getting started guide, Adobe Audition CC 2009. If you have any questions, please put those in the comment section below as I will get to those as, as soon and as quickly as I possibly can. Thank you guys as always for watching my videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more great tech content and tutorials just like this. And until next time, talk to you later.